Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and today we are looking into the palettes from Adept Cosmetics. These two in particular. I have the Plain Jane and the Ninhydrin palettes. We're going to do swatches and first impressions, so one look per each palette. If that sounds interesting to you, keep on watching. Before we get too far into the video, if you have not already, please consider subscribing. I upload new videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. It's totally free to do so. And as soon as Wesley and I schedule lines up, we will be filming a video for hitting 250 subscribers on the channel. I think he's gonna do my makeup, you guys. It's gonna be a really great time. So make sure you have your notifications turned on so you don't miss out on that. I'm also going to be doing a giveaway in that video, so don't miss it and make sure you're subscribed. All right, without any further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into the Plain Jane palette first. All right guys, we are gonna start today with the Plain Jane palette from Adept Cosmetics. Um, I filmed my look with my Ninhydrin palette first. You guys will see that second. So this is only the second time I've tried the brand, the Ninhydrin palette being the other time. This has all the same formula in it. They are all the ACI formula. AC's Adept Cosmetics. I'm not sure what the I stands for, if it's iridescent or what. The other one had um, some duochromes and mattes, but this one does not. So I'm going to start out just throwing a couple of random NYX shades that are mattes in my crease before I use this um, in today's look. But there are zero repeats in shades between the Plain Jane and the Mean Hydra. They're all different shades. And we're going to start with swatches before we get into the first look. So the reason I'm starting with Plain Jane before we get into swatches here is because they are coming up on the anniversary of this palette. The owner has said that they are going to discontinue not offer this palette anymore. I'm not sure about the singles, but they are going to do one more order of the Plain Jane. So if when you see these swatches in this look you're interested, make sure you check out their socials. This is going to be available again on August 25th. That's Wednesday of next week. They are making two changes though here. So when I swatch ACI, uh, both 10 which is like this whitey pinky one and 12 this one here on the end those two are replaced with different shades in the drop that's happening next week so if you're interested in seeing those shades um, they are on their Instagram and if you already have this one but you want those two shades that they put out instead you can buy those individually but they are $15 a piece which I feel like is a lot for one shade but it's an indie brand, I get it, they're special shades. But let's get into the swatches. All right, so here is the palette, everyone. I'm gonna start over on this side and travel down to the other side in the names here. Now the shade names aren't anything special, they're all just ACI and then a number. So it's numbers one through 12. So I'm gonna try to give you a little bit of a description of each of these um, and some thoughts just based on my swatches, but the numbers aren't anything like cool or fun really they don't even have one named uh plain jane like at least in anhydrin one of them has that shade name um but that's i don't know maybe something for them to consider i know it's a small thing but i really like different shade names and having actual names let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about that as far as shade names go so the first one there, ACI1, is just a nice bronzy. All of these are shimmery. There's no mattes, I think I already mentioned. Uh, number two is the same kind of bronzy, but it's got a little bit more of gold reflect in it. Then we've got three, which is a peachy color. Four is a little bit deeper. Sorry, it wasn't in, the, in frame there for you guys for those. Four is a little bit pinker. Three is more peachier. And I think that five and three look similar enough that they probably could have done with just one or the other. You can't see that much of a difference. Maybe three is slightly more gold than five, but it's still that like peachy pink family. What do you guys think? Does it look very different to you? Then we've got these next four that they just remind me of Alien Cosmetics. I bet they're exact like... I don't want to say dupes like they were trying to copy each other, but they, they're probably the same. These remind me of the uh, Lore palette and the Serendipity palette so much. The reason I say that is because they all have like a clear base, if that makes sense. Like there's not a colored base to it. It's just like clear or beige with the sparkly topper shade. 
Number six is it's kind of a purpley pinkish like topper shade, which I really have been into these topper shades lately because I think they not only look great in the inner corners, but it's great to transform anything that's like kind of just a crappy meh so-so. Like maybe if you have a drugstore mat that's a little patchy, a little eh, not too impressive you can top it with one of these shades and all of a sudden you have something magical number seven is kind of like yellowy green but it's got a little bit of a blue shift to it again reminds me of alien cosmetics number eight is a little similar to number six but it leans more blue and it's got kind of like a tan base to it number 10 is a goldish green Sorry, that was number nine is the goldish green. Number 10, I can see why they replaced this. Much like I said in my Killer Queens Cosmetics video, I'll link that if you haven't seen it yet. This is just like been out for years. It's that stereotypical, like looks white but comes off pink iridescent shade that I think we've seen a hundred times by now from brands. And the last two really remind me of the anti-Valentine's Day palette as well from Killer Queens Cosmetic. Number 11 is kind of a purpley pinky blue. And then we have more of a deeper pink for number 12. So here again is all of the shades in the Plain Jane palette. So I threw a couple of mattes in the crease, like I said. And I also went in with my Ulta Beauty Glitter Primer. Just trying to use that up before I... I probably won't buy this one again. I'm going to get the NYX one because I know that's the one that everyone raves about. I've actually never tried the NYX one. I got this one at one point and I'm just trying to use this up but I'll get the NYX one the next time. I think I want to go kind of green today you guys. So I'm going to start with ACI 9 and I'm going on an M124. That's the same brush that I applied the glitter primer with. These are all very color pop shoot super shock shadow consistency. Like if I pushed my finger in them, it would leave an indentation. They're very putty-like. They might work better with the finger, but I just kind of wanted to use a brush. You know what, I think just for science sake, let's go in with our finger just to see what if any kind of difference that makes. Okay, so I would say if you apply it with the brush, you're gonna get more of a texture difference. That's what I'm seeing at least. The finger makes it look a lot more smooth, whereas using the brush makes it look a lot more textured. I don't think either looks bad, but that might just be like your personal preference, what sort of texture you're looking for. But it's definitely smoother with my finger than it was with the brush. Go back to the brush though, just to kind of get the edges to lay where I want them to. I'm gonna go next with ACI 7. Now this is gonna be interesting to put on the lid because it's one of the more sheer topper bases, but I want there to be kind of like a nice gradient or ombre between this and the next color, and I think this will be in that same green family. Yeah, it's really popping too. That's nice for a center of the lid shade. Honestly, that this is the type of palette I feel like you could just pick one, go across the whole lid and be done and it would just speak for itself. It's so pretty. Ooh, I really like that one. I like ACI 7 more than 9 so far. That's really nice. You probably can't see the difference. Well, maybe you can on camera right on, but like when I turn, you I think can see the difference between where the two colors meet. It's interesting. Like you can see the ombre effect on some angles, but then it disappears in others. It's so interesting. I think I'm just gonna go kind of bronzy towards the inner corner here. So I'm gonna go with ACI 2. And this one I am gonna do on the opposite side of the brush just because I want the precision here on the inside corner. Yeah, the texture is totally different with the brush though. Maybe I just need to experiment with different brushes I'm using here. This is, if I haven't already said guys, a first impressions for me with this palette. All right, what do we think? Green and bronze. I don't know if I've literally ever done green and bronze in my life as a color story. I think I like it. It's nice. I think I might just leave it at that. The only thing I could see putting in like the inner corner would be 
some of those like translucent base colors like ACI 6, 7, and 8, which I already used 7 on the lid. I could do that, but I don't really want green on the inner corner. And I don't really want to go blue or purple with the green and bronze look I have going. And then ACI 10 is pink. So I think I might just leave it. If I do anything, I might use like a little bit of highlighter to brighten up the inner corner or something. But I'm going to go finish this look off camera and I will be back. All right, guys, I am back here with the final look. So let's see, what did I change? Um, I did add highlighter on the inner corners and on my cheekbones. This is from Hakari. It is actually a cream pigment in the shade Honeydew. I added a liquid lip from Lottie London in the shade Fleek. Um, Woodsy Eyeliner is the shade from the ColourPop and Rob Beauty Christie collection on the upper lash line. And then LA Girl Gel Liner in Limelight in the Waterline as well as the NYX Lift Scara Mascara. I think that's everything. I'll have stuff listed down in the description below too if you want to know anything that I'm wearing that is not mentioned in the video. So far so good. I really do enjoy this palette. I'm happy to have it. Uh, we're gonna go to look two now. All right guys, so today we are playing with the Adept Cosmetics Ninhydrin palette. And she is currently out of stock, but if you follow the brand's socials, the owner has said that they will be restocking this, I think only one more time. So keep your eyes open on their Instagram page. Again, that's Adept Cosmetics. If you are interested in this particular palette, I think the shades individually some of these you'll still be able to get as singles but i don't know if all of the shades will be but for sure they are going to be discontinuing the palette after i think one more restock so i'm going to swatch all the shades for you guys since i'm not using every single shade in the look for today and then we'll get into the look after swatches all right guys so here is the palette all swatched out I initially almost didn't get Ninhydrin just because it looked a little blue to me, just the color story looking at, but I realized when I looked closer, I think it just seems so blue to me because of the color of this background of the palette. If you look at the swatches, there's not that many actually blue shades. So I'm going to go from left to right, and I'm going to start with this matte over here. There are a variety of textures in these palettes. The first one is ACM 31 and it is a cool toned and it is a cool toned uh, brown kind of leaning with like a little bit of a purpley undertone. Then we have ACD 18 and that is not at all what I thought it would be you guys. Um, it looks very pink in the pan but on my arm, it's that second one. You would think it would be this one, the pink one, but it's not, it's the second one. And it's quite yellow. It's like a yellow to pink duochrome. The third one, the one that actually looks more pink, it is ACI 18. That's more of like a sparkly pink. The one next to it is ACI 22. When I swatched, of course, this one was a matte. This one felt like more like a hard pressed, what you would think of as a metallic in a palette, but it was a duo chrome, even though it was hard pressed. These two were softer pressed, more like a uh, flaky feeling. The next one's also a matte, that's ACM 32, and it's again more of like a cool tone brown, a little less purple undertone than the first matte. And to finish the top row, we have ACI 19, which is this duo chrome right here. Um, it is pink, but it's not quite as pink as the original pink over here. It's a little bit deeper, and it's got a deeper base to it as well. Second row, starting with ACI 20, as soon as I swiped this, I went, oh, I know the shade because this looks identical to the shade Enamel from Cleono Cosmetics, which is the only single I own from them, and I love it. So I'm so happy to have another shade in my collection that looks like that because I've made quite an indent into that enamel shade and I was starting to wonder what I would do when that ran out. So now I have something that looks really, really the same. Um, it is kind of purple to blue shifting. The deeper blue next to it is ACI 21. Next, we have the pinky purple color called Nenhydrin. That's the only shade in the palette that has an actual name and not just a number. The deep purple is ACI 23. 
The next one's very interesting. This reminds me of Scarab in the Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson collaboration, the Tiny Marbles palette, but it's kind of like bluish but also a brown base I guess is the best way I can describe it for you. It's pretty true in person to how it's coming off in camera. You can kind of see the base on the border of that shade versus the color of the reflect on top there. And then last but certainly not least we have ACI 25 and that is this green. It has a little bit of a brownish base to it but not too deep. So there is the Ninhydrin palette. So in total, this palette has 12 shades. Two of them are labeled as the ACM, which I assume is Adept Cosmetics Matte. Um, one of them is ACD, there's only one, and that is that duochrome, so I'm assuming D stands for duochrome, and I'm not sure what the I stands for, so if anybody knows what the ACI stands for, I'm not really sure if those are, if it's like iridescent or what I stands for, but those are the more like flaky formula. That's what most of this palette is, and there are nine of those if you include Ninhydrin, which visually you can tell is of that same formula, but they just gave it an actual name. I do think you can use this palette as a standalone. I'm going to today in my first impressions, but of course there's only two mattes. I personally do like to have a little bit of a matte in the crease thrown down before I go in with these other types of sparkly shades, but do whatever you want, obviously. Let's zoom in and put some colors on our eyes. All right, so I'm gonna start with my M441 and I'm gonna go in with ACM32. That is that cool toned matte. It's kind of the lighter of the two. The other one had a little more of like a purpley undertone. I think I'm gonna use that other matte to deepen up my outer third of my eye today. This kind of palette, honestly, even when I'm trying to be quick and out the door, because even if you just do three colors, like throw a mid-toned color in the crease like I'm doing now, throw another matte on the outer corner for some depth, and then just throw the shimmer on the rest of the lid, that can be a pretty nice looking look with not too much time and effort spent on it. So next I'm going in with an M456 and I'm going in with that first matte, the deeper one, and I am gonna do that just on the outer corners here to do a little bit of dimension for what other shimmers are going to accompany this. These are going to pop much better if I use a glitter primer or a glitter glue. So I've got that as well that I'm gonna throw on. Just taking whatever's left of that matte underneath the eye. I'm not adding any extra product. I just usually do that just to kind of make everything cohesive. Here's our Ulta Beauty Glitter Primer. I know a lot of people love the NYX one, but this is just what I have had in my collection. You can even see I need to wipe off the brush here, but that is that shade from Cleano that I was just talking about that I'm running out that this has like a really, I think, identical shade, honestly, in it. If you don't have one of these, by the way, these little dry makeup brush cleaner things, they're great because I just took that brush that had all that and just gave it a little swirl and it is good to go. I definitely did after pay with these, I will tell you that though, because they were pretty expensive, but it is an indie brand and these are more like duochrome, special, sparkly, shifty shades, so that's kind of normal, goes with the territory, right? Okay, I think I'm gonna opt for the kind of pinkier shades today. So I am gonna start, I think, with ACI 19, this one. And that's gonna go out here on the outside. Yes, I love this kind of shade. This formula, I think, is really popular with indie brands right now because it's the same kind of flaky formula, too, that I feel like the, um, Killer Queen's Cosmetics Anti-Valentine's Day palette had. Like this shade's reminded me of a pink in that shade a lot. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it linked in the cards if you're interested. So this one's ACI 19. I'm gonna go now with ACI 18, just one shade number difference. And this is more of one of those like putty shades. Like think color pop, super shock shadow, like that kind of putty-ish feeling but it is picking up with the brush. Yeah, those are so similar that I don't know, I don't know, I might have opted for something else in this palette instead of both of those, like 18 and 19, because 
they look pretty similar on the eye. They feel different like applying them with the brush for sure, but they they look the same, I think. What do you guys think? Can you really tell a difference between those two shades, ACI 18 and ACI 19? I can't say that I do. Slight shift in ACI 19 when I turn my head. I think that one might be a little green of an undertone or something now that I'm seeing that the inside one doesn't have but it's subtle if it's there. I'm gonna take an M560 and I'm gonna go on my inner corners with ACD18, this duochrome like in this first row. The one that shocked me that like, it looks like it's gonna be so pink and then it was like yellowy when I actually swatched it. It does shift pink though, so I thought it would go well with this look. I think this one, this ACD18 too, I'm putting a little bit here, I think it would look gorgeous as a highlighter. What do you guys think? Can you see it showing up a little bit here in this one? Oh yeah, right there when I shift, you can see. Yeah, I think that would be a really nice highlighter. I'm into that one for sure. I don't think you can see it that well in my inner corners though on the camera, but in real life, you can see the, the yellowy brightness on the inner corner. Nice. These are really nice. I think I might want to do more looks with this. This is, of course, just my first impressions of these palettes, but if you would like to see more of the Nin Hydrin and the Plain Jane, let me know in the comments down below. I can do a Get Ready With Me. I can do multiple looks to palettes. I could do a palette bingo. Any of those, if you guys have requests, let me know. I'm going to go off camera and finish this look, and I will be back with the completed Nin Hydrin look. Okay, guys, and here's the completed look. I really do think that a lash would complete this look, but I'm about to go march in a festival in my town and it's just gonna be sweaty and I don't wanna deal with like my lash glue lifting and stuff like that. So I added the lip from Lottie London. Uh, it's the Slay All Day Liquid Lipstick in the shade Fleek. I added the ColourPop Club with Raw Beauty Christie eyeliner on the upper lash line in the shade Woodsy. The ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in shade Extra Frosting from the Limoncello Collection in my waterline. And the NYX Lift Scara to my lashes. All right, so I will tell you my final thoughts with these palettes. Um, I'm actually filming this look first, even though you're seeing it second, so I'll be transformed in a moment for you with my final thoughts. All right, guys, now that we've done one look each and swatches with each of the palettes, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. My personal opinion, check your collection first before you buy. If you have nothing like this, then I would say get the palettes. Especially if you want all the shades, the palettes are gonna be your best deal when you're talking about price. But if you're like me and you're going, oh, well this shade reminds me of Kleana. This shade reminds me of something I have from Alien Cosmetics. This shade reminds me of something from Killer Queens. Check, because once again, like I believe I said in that Killer Queens cosmetics video, um, the, the quality is pretty similar and the texture of these is pretty similar to some of those other brands and things that they put out. That does not mean it's bad or they're copying them or anything by any means. Don't think that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying check your collection because if you find you have things that are similar to these, maybe you want one or two shades and you want to pay the $15 for a single and just spend $30 and instead of the price point of the whole palette because they are expensive. But again, you are getting a much better deal on those shades as a collection, as a bundle, if you don't have them in your collection. So I think that's kind of my final thoughts on Adept Cosmetics. I keep going back and forth about whether I'm gonna pick up the Kodan palette. That's their third in this kind of like series installments of palettes or whatever lately that they've been doing from Adept Cosmetics. If anybody has experienced Kodan, let me know. I'd be curious to have your thoughts on that or if you think those shades are similar to anything else. I might try to look like I just recommended to you guys in my collection before I pull the trigger on that one. And let me know if you guys would like to see a video sometime since, you know, I'm sitting here claiming they're similar shades. 
Do you want to see a dupe video? Do you want to see, yeah, I am interested in this, but what else do you have that could be similar to those? I'm not going to say I have something for every single shade, but there's at least half of those that I think I have something else in my collection that I could show you guys. Um, not that one would be cheaper or more expensive, whatever, just different brands and different choices. Sometimes it's nice to know that two in case something sells out is out of stock, discontinued, if you really love it. Um, like I mentioned in the Ninhydrin palette, I now I know there's another place I can get that shade that I really, really love and use all the time. Not that Cleon is getting rid of enamel, that's like one of my favorite shades of all time I've ever tried, but there's another option. So guys, that is all from me today. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it all the way down to the end of the video, it's almost spooky season and I love Halloween. So if you've made it this far, leave me a spooky emoji down in the comments with your thoughts. Would love to see all of your fun pumpkins, bats, and such. I think I'm gonna do one of my uh, like Wednesday videos. I might do like a little spooky shopping um, video just because I've seen some of those going around and that's what I've been enjoying watching. So let me know as well if you would be interested in something like that. That is all guys. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye!